So, in terms of uh, reading, why don't we quickly go ahead and have a look at uh, one or two data sets. Um, just before I do, I'll just review a couple of points here on the reader. Typically, we recommend that you have the reader driven by the CityGML schema. <laughs> if you are using an ADE, uh, make sure you specify it here uh, um, on the top right. And uh, often ignoring exercise schema location will, will help if you have, you're having any trouble reading a data set. And uh, unless you want a lot of extra feature types, it's best to include only those in the data set. So uh, one feature type per city Gmail class. And here's just another view of what LED looks like. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, jump into a few examples. So here, LOD1, <laughs> this is very simple. Looking at a data inspector, so of course in 2013, data inspector allows you to view 3D and uh, we've, we're constantly enhancing it, so the performance is getting better and better. Uh, so with the table view now, I, I would really think that most of you would be using data inspector and not the viewer. And so you can see here that this is a solid and uh, uh, in terms of the attribution, city object member, and then within the geometry itself, uh, you can see that it has the traits LOD1 solid, so it's level of detail 1. And if we look at the same object with LOD2, Around. So it's just a house with um, windows, and then of course we can turn on and off um, the ground surface, the roof, the walls, and windows. And you can see through those windows, I guess if they're set to be transparent, or if we turn them off. And so you can see the geometry here now says LOD 3, so 2 or 3, I guess because there is a uh, some architectural detail, you can argue this is LD3. And it even has some attribution like uh, the description field. Okay, so very simple, starting with a very simple data set, and then of course we can get more complicated. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look here. Data inspector again. Oh yeah, I was going to do one other thing before I open this one, just to show you what the underlying XML looks like. So you can see that um, here's a city object member. So it has this is a a building and. Uh, so there's the ID for the building, the description, and then within that, you can see that it's uh, got a wall composed of a wall surface, and the wall surface is composed of uh, polygons, etc. So don't be too scared to look at the XML, especially if you're having trouble reading it. I, mean, I would go ahead and open up your CGML in whatever viewer you're using, or if you're using it, you need to read it and translate it to something else. But if you're having trouble, um, reading it, you might find, let's say, for example, it says uh, CDGML 1.1 in here, and that will cause a problem with, uh, with the namespace. Okay, and let's have a look at something a little bit more, a bit richer data set.
track of the time here. Okay, so this is a downtown uh, data model. I'm not sure if this is Rotterdam, but this is from uh, the three pilot from uh, Geonovum. And so you can see that uh, we have downtown buildings uh, that uh, are textured, and uh, we can inspect these individually and see, okay, this is a wall surface uh, LOD2. So uh, LOD2 meaning we've got uh, detail, roof detail, and potentially uh, texture information. And uh, 29 buildings, yeah, so the nice thing about it, uh, our, our, um, the data inspector, it does show you that detail of how those are, the geometries are composed. And so this is key. If you're writing to CityGML and you're not getting the output you expect, you're going to be going, using the viewer to inspect that and see, have I set the traits correctly? Uh, are the IDs correct? And things like that. So having this ability to inspect at any level of, as deeply as you want within the data model is really important. So here, this polygon uh, is a member of this surface of a wall, which ultimately belongs to the building. Now, while we inspect that, I'm just going to show you that uh, how easy it is to work with um, CityGML reading. So I'm going to actually run, uh, build, make a workspace from scratch here, and translate directly to 3D PDF. 33 PDF. I'm going to call this, um, let's just say, March 27 demo uh, PDF. And just make sure I know where that's going. Let's put it on my desktop. So I was just all it's going to do is read the feature types that are in the in the source data set, building and ground surface, etc., and replicate those in the PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. It's going to take about two minutes. And just back to that model. Yeah, so we can we can look at this at the building level, or we can turn these things off and just take a look at it, the individual modules. Let's say roof surface. And examine the traits. Okay. So, um, and I've also found that the performance of uh, the inspector has improved a lot, even in the last year. Um, sometimes, if you're dealing with a really large data set, then uh, you might want to consider using a 64 bit. Right now, I'm just using the 2013 release uh, on 32 bit. So, I'm going to go back to the translation. It's writing the PDF file right now. But you can see that, yeah, we need to look at the workspace that was generated. So you can see the building object and the attributes, how the attributes are read, and uh, and then the how that's replicated in terms of the destination PDF. Now, some of these fields will be reproduced in that point. So you, you know, PDF has certain limitations with attribute writing. Okay, so it should be done in a second. There's the, I think that's it there. It's popped up. That's not quite done yet. There we go. Just take a second to open. So this is the um, city model. Uh, just in the 3D PDF. And why bother showing uh, PDF when we're talking about CGML? Well, CGML really is, uh, its strength is a, as a transport uh, or exchange format, but not everybody out there is going to be able to work with CGML. So if you have um, uh, 3D data online and you want to make it available to the public, this is one good way to do it. Uh, you might also want to use KML, so uh, right to Collada. Write your 3D model to KML, and the uh, KML writer will automatically generate a collage model um, within the KML. 
And in fact, you can see that a lot of the details are preserved as well. Okay, so that's that so demo. And last but not least, uh, really, really quickly, uh, again, a nod to the uh, 3D IMGO uh, 3D pilot from the Netherlands. Uh, in terms of our support for, um, yeah, here we go. In terms of our support for ADEs, so I can I can read this data, but if I try to read it, well, for the sake of time, I won't do it. If I try to read it without the um, the ADE schema, I'm not going to get any of the uh, ADE feature types. So I'm going to have to pull in that schema here. So there's the IMGO um, application domain extension. So this is the output of a 2D to 3D conversion. And uh, so the input data, um, Holland is basically uh, moving from um, 2D base mapping. So for the whole, at the national scale, they're going to move to 3D base mapping. And so that's why they came up with the IMGO data model. So a lot of the uh, layers have been localized. I have to turn this off. So here's the data. <clears throat> so it's basically a city. I think this is the Den Bosch area of uh, southern Netherlands. And so you can see it's at the city scale. And uh, we can click on individual buildings and see that uh, data model, and which looks like typical city GML, except now we have all these IMGOs. So we have uh, specific traits and attributes uh, related to the, the Dutch schema. So they've extended it. They've also um, added a bunch of their own modules, water deal, because of course water is pretty important to, in the Netherlands. And, uh, and then they have their own spelling for some of the uh, uh, theme names, like out, outbuildings and whatnot. So there's just an example of uh, using an, an ADE application domain extension. OK, so. Just wrapping up then in terms of reading, and then we'll, I'll hand it over to Dave. Um, so we, we basically looked at CityGML in an XML editor, which is a good way to diagnose things if you're having trouble uh, reading. Uh, we looked at uh, different levels of detail and uh, different CityGML themes and geometry structure, and we also looked at an example of a updated application domain extension. 